What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Dave. I mostly shoot Leica and this video is kind of putting the next phase of my Leica journey out here in public. And that is I recently picked up the replacement, or at least let me say it like this. I recently picked up my planned replacement for the A7S 3 the camera that I'm actually shooting this on, and that is the Leica. SL2S. And shout out real quick to Tim Lee for hooking this up. I bought my M11 from Tim, I bought my 35 Sumalux from Tim, and now I have bought this Leica SL2S, and I also have a Leica 24 to 70 coming. It's not in yet, but that's okay. We're still able to get rolling into this camera. All those came from Tim. Great dude. Tim is not paying me to say any of this. Uh, this is just my own thoughts, but if you have any needs for any Leica gear, be sure to hit Tim up at the email address right below. Okay, enough about all that. Let's talk for a minute about my decision to move over to this, especially given that we know, well, I can't say we know, but it's a pretty sure bet that in March or around March of 2024, which is only in like three and a half months, Leica is going to release the SL3. We don't wanna chase a bunch of rumors, but it's probably gonna be very similar to the M11 and what it does, but in a body like this, they can do autofocus and, you know, Know, more more of what a modern camera system would do. So why would I pick up this SL2S, which is now several years old, that has an older sensor, an older tech in it, and contrast autofocus? Like, why would I go that route now and say this is my replacement for the A7S III? Here's the thing. I have spent this entire year on a journey into the Leica system. I just launched this YouTube channel early this year to capture this journey and many of you have been along with me for the whole ride and it's just been like a roller coaster but it's been awesome but throughout the year I've been selling off my what used to be very robust Sony kit several GM lenses and I still have the camera bodies but they are on the chopping block as well as I move over to the Leica system by the way just I'm gonna put this out there on the front end I'm not moving over to Leica because it's like better because by all comparisons, I actually think the tech that is in the Sony line is actually better tech than what you're gonna find in the Leica cameras. But I'm moving over for the experience of using the Leica system. I love using the Leica M system. I really feel like I found my thing when I first got into the M and now like I don't see a scenario where I ever go back. And I know that might be cliche. I saw a really funny video about things that Leica people say and that's one of them. But it really is true. Like I don't see myself going back now that I've spent a year shooting the rangefinder. I love that I'm able to easily adapt my Leica lenses onto another Leica body. And yes, I know I can do that on the Sony kit as well. Well, because I've done it, I've adapted Leica lenses, my M lenses, onto my Sony kit, but it's not quite the same. It doesn't really have the Leica look because the sensor really does matter. So all of that to say, the migration over here to the SL system is really video driven, but also allows me to continue to do some photography with this camera when I need autofocus or when I just want to use an EVF on my M lenses, which by the way, I have been like, resisting like a Visoflex or any of that EVF stuff for the M and I still am, I have no plans to get into that. But the idea of using the M lenses with an EVF doesn't feel right, but oh my gosh, like it's so easy to nail focus every time on a system like this and so that was that's pretty cool. There's a hundred videos out there about the tech specs and all the things on the SL2S, but here's what you need to know and why I made the decision to go over to it. So I've kind of already shared like the biggest reason is the experience and having just like a uniformity in my brand that I'm using and in the look that comes out of that brand. But a second reason is that I feel like that there's something special about the Leica colors and contrast that come out of these cameras. When I shoot and then I go to grade it, it just has more personality. I understand right now that if you are like a gear tech person, you're probably hating this video, but I can't really explain it. Like I shot this around my house yesterday while, the, while my wife was cooking dinner and my kids were playing and I just got some like footage of them just doing their thing. And there's like a personality to the look and maybe it's all in my head. Please don't leave comments 
hating on what I'm saying here. I'm just giving you like my two cents on this. But I have one big concern and I'm going to bring you along on this journey and we're going to take a look at it together. And that is the strength of the A7S 3 is having dual base ISOs. So 640 in S-Log3 and 12,800 in S-Log3 are both a noiseless, beautiful image. And the problem with capturing video in between those is that you get very unusable footage without having to apply a bunch of noise reduction, unless you like that kind of look. I personally don't love that look. So knowing that I can't go to 12,000 and still get perfectly clean images and video is a bit concerning switching over to a system like this because I actually use 12,000 a lot. In fact, I mostly use 12,800 with a six to nine stop ND filter on my camera. Like that's like my go-to, but I won't be able to do that with a camera like this, or maybe I can, I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through various gain stages of the sensor and the ISO and take a look at what the noise looks like if we compare the Sony A7S III to the Leica SL2S. So here's the stops we're gonna do. We're gonna start at 640 because 640 is the base ISO on the Sony, 400 is the base ISO ISO on this one in L-Log, but we're just going to start at 640 together. Then we're going to go to 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, 12,000, 25,000, and 50,000. And we're just going to side by side look at the footage and see how the noise looks between these two systems. And look, at the end of the day, the verdict is going to be out for many months as to what's going to stick. I don't believe like one test or one experience can really solidify a camera system for a person. They have to use it, see how they love it, see how it works for them. I very much intend to pick up an SL3 in a few months whenever it releases and then this may become my B cam in the same way that right now I use a A cam which is the Sony A7S III and then my B cam is the A7R5. So my plan is that when we get into the spring and the Leica SL3 releases, there's a good chance that I will sell off at that time the A7R5 and the A7S3 and grab a Leica SL3 and then I'll have my A video, my B video, and of course my M11 and my M6. I did sell the Q2 by the way. And then I'm basically set. My kit has fully transitioned at that time. And it took about 18 months to make a full transition, which I think is a pretty healthy pace. I didn't just like go all in on the system and then look back and have regrets. And if you've been following this channel, you know it's been kind of a turbulent year of trying things and trying different things and making up my mind and changing my mind. It's just part of it. So as we get into this next part of the video, I'm gonna put the ISO and the F stop that you're watching it on in the description of the video as you're looking at the side by side so you know where we are in the process. And as far as color grading those, I'm literally just going to convert them using DaVinci's color space conversion. I'm gonna put them at Rec 709 and just make sure they look natural. I'm not gonna throw any like creative LUTs on them or anything. I just want them to look natural. And we're not really trying to like dive in on all the colors and try to give all of our thoughts there. Make it about the noise and what the gain stage you think is usable and unusable for the ISO. All right guys, let's jump in.
Okay, so you've had a chance now to review it for yourself. I want to hear your conclusions. I want to see what you think. So leave a comment below and let me know where you think both cameras become unusable or are they usable all the way up? For me, the verdict is out. I am planning to shoot as low as possible, but that's not always gonna be the case. And so I guess I will figure it out as I go, but I would love to hear from you. You know, you look at the noise on both cameras. What do you think? Like, what would you do? And we're gonna leave it at that. So I'm gonna be watching every single comment and as I always try to do, responding to every single comment. So be sure to leave one and seriously give me your thoughts. I really value what you're going to say about the noise of the A7S III and the Leica SL2S. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're almost at the end of the year, just a couple of videos left until we get into 2024. And one particular video I'm very excited about, a recap of this entire year and some very transparent things to talk about. Very excited about it. All right, I will see you guys next time.